All right, so this should probably be a bit more of a simple one. Today, we're gonna cover the worst Pokemon of every type, specifically for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Look, I know I've been talking about this game a lot as of recent, but that's because Pokemon Home getting that update has me excited. Now, will I be talking about them in this video? No, they all aren't technically in the Scarlet and Violet Pokedex, and you can't really use them in a playthrough. And in terms of competitive, most of the Pokemon Home stuff is pretty good. Heatran, the Genies, Magearna, and some other stuff too. Now, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Do I need to explain why Krikatoon is the worst bug type on this list? Probably not. So, to save you guys time, and for the very few who don't know, I'm gonna make this incredibly simple. It has terrible stats, a mediocre move pull, a lost knockoff this gem to make it even worse, which I question why Game Freak decided by all accounts to nerf Krikatoon of all Pokemon. And yeah, I guess you could, I don't know, try to run a Swords Dance, Trailblaze, Leech Life, and Taunt set in order to set up on walls, but with how bad its offensive stats are, it'll need to successfully get multiple Swords Dances and Trailblazes up before it can do real damage. With how awful its defenses are, that isn't going to happen against any offensive threat. Now, if it were in the Scarlet and Violet Pokedex, this would without a doubt go to Alolan Persian, but that arrived with Pokemon Home. And I said I'd keep it to the Scarlet and Violet Pokedex for now. And look, while I firmly agree that Houndoom is underrated, and I've talked about it before, there's no denying that there are simply better options. Honchkrow has Moxie and Choice Scarf to work with, and Cacturn has a niche of Spikes, Sucker Punch, and various utility moves. Houndoom just has some really stiff competition with the other Dark types, and doesn't really cut it for today's standards for viability. It isn't fast enough anymore, it doesn't hit hard enough without Nasty Plot, and it's pretty frail. Don't get me wrong, if you can set up a Nasty Plot, then Fire Blast, Dark Pulse, and Sludge Bomb can carry you a decent bit in the lower tiers. The issue is managing to successfully do that without getting revenge killed or KO'd while trying to set up. I feel bad for this poor guy. It's very weird not to immediately say that Altaria is the worst. Will-O-Wisp in Roost gives it good utility. Natural Cure lets it remove status on Switch Out, and Dragon Dance can bolster its kit. Flapple and Appleton, however, are sadly pretty bad. Grass and Dragon isn't the best type combo, and Appleton isn't good enough at tanking attacks, even with Thick Fat to play its role. Flapple has one massive problem with it that makes it unreliable. Hustle. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it's very strong, but it lacks the consistency due to always having Stone Edge accuracy to be a true threat. And without Hustle, it's not hitting hard enough. These two are honestly very cool Pokemon that were just dealt a very bad hand. So, Dedene, right? Like, do I even have to explain this one? Don't get me wrong, I love Dedene, and it's probably one of my favorite Pika clones. I think it's a cute hamster, and I just want to give it love, attention, and snacks. But I'm not going to act like it's good. Its only good stat is its speed, clocking in at base 101. And I suppose you could make use of Cheek Pouch and a Citrus Berry for longevity. Super Fang, Nuzzle, Volt Switch, and like your choice of Grass Knot or Draining Kiss could do something in the lower tiers if you tried hard enough. But its fragility makes it really hard to pull off the utility move pool. So instead of focusing on its viability, I petition to bring back Pokemon contests, where something like Didene would shine extraordinarily. So... Didene. Am I right? I got you there for a second, didn't I? Anyways, this is arguably between, like, Doxbun and Florgis. Sure, now that it's back, Carbink would be in contention. But Sturdy, Trick Room, and Stealth Rock is just another Ursaluna enabler, so it evades this spot. Sadly, Doxbun does not. Don't get me wrong. I love well-baked body, and I love that it was used back when Shiyu was an OU because it was a near-perfect counter to it, resisting dark and gaining a massive defense buff when hit by a fire move, allowing it to threaten a dangerous body press. In theory, it's the perfect Shiyu counter. In practice, it was harder to get in, even with defensive investment due to how much of the metagame outgunned and threatened it. And if your opponent wasn't using Shiyu, 
it was a wasted team slot. So it fell out of favor, and then when she was banned, it dropped off a cliff, where it rests in PU to this day. But hey, nothing too wrong with Wish, Protect, Body Press, and Play Rough, right? So I know I could just go back on my word and put Crabominable here, but absolutely not. Crabominable has a niche in Trick Room. I'm sure of it. I have faith in it. However, despite how much I love Phalanx, it just isn't it. It probably has a genuine niche in PU, with no retreat buffing its stats and battle armor preventing it from being crit. But the issue here mostly revolves around the fact that it's slow, it's frail on the special side, and can just get KO'd before setting up no retreat. No retreat traps you, so if the opponent switches into a wall, you're just flailing there. Or, heaven forbid, you get forced out with Roar or Whirlwind, and now you have to find another opportunity to come in and set up no retreat again. Yeah, when it goes off, it goes off. The issue is getting it to go off. Defiant is also a good ability to get back at the Intimidators of PU, being Masquerain and Squawkabilly. But they're both flying type, which beats fighting, and they both outspeed and threaten Phalanx. Well, what about Defoggers? Dartrix is the only current Defogger in PU who is also a flying type. I guess you can terrestalize it into a type to beat flying, but you're using up your Terra, and I don't know if it's worth that. Flareon being the worst fire type? Surely not, right? It even gets Trailblaze to hit water types while raising its speed. And it has Double Kick, Dig, Terra Blast, and whatever Terra type you want to use for its other coverage on a Pokemon that's physically frail and is slow. It has a base 130 attack stat that it can buff up with Flame Orb if you're rolling the Terra out of being a fire type, or Toxic Orb if you don't want to use a Terra just to get to play Flareon, and still doesn't have anything it can really do with it because its coverage is just too middling. Come on, man. Aw, oh, man. Squawkabilly. Here we are again. 96 attack, 92 speed, no defenses to speak of, no good moves you can make use of for sheer force. We've talked about Hustle's downside already, Intimidate doesn't help much when you have a mind-boggling base 51 defense, and actually, I have nothing really bad to say about Guts. Protect, proc Flame Orb, and using Facade isn't the worst. The issue is that if you want a powerful normal and flying type, Reckless Star Raptor does similar damage and it's naturally faster. Utility-wise, Parting Shot is a rather unique attribute to have, and Taunt is a solid option too. The issue is that if it uses Taunt, it leaves itself open to get exploited with those low defenses. Parting Shot is good, but its speed holds it back from making true use of it, and Grimmsnarl just does both Taunt and Parting Shot better. Final Gambit is an option with its base 82 HP stat, but Staraptor also gets Final Gambit and has a base 85 HP stat. Every time I look at Squawkabilly, I feel worse and worse for it. Hopefully one day, it'll be good at something. Bayonet not being good? That's absolutely crazy. Insane, even. Bayonet is amazing. It even has a Mega that it can no longer use, and wasn't really particularly viable in comparison to other Megas when it did have it. You know what? I'm not going to waste your time on this one. Slow? Frail, an attack stat that doesn't cut it anymore, a move pull that is interesting with some solid options like Swords Dance, Trailblaze, Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp, and Trick Room that it can't make use of due to its bad stats. You know how this goes. Bayonet remains bad for the same reasons it's always been bad. This is like asking me who I think is worse between Tropias and Sunflora. But if I rip on Sunflora, I'm not really covering anything new here, huh? Sunflora is the worst. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. Who would have thought? So instead, I'm going to just talk about Tropias anyways, just so I'm not beating a dead horse. Grass flying is bad. Go figure. But with solidish defenses and access to Harvest, Leet Seed, Giga Drain, and Synthesis, there's a role there where you could terrestrialize in a solid defensive type and just sit there recycling your Citrus Berry and whittling down your opponent. The issue with this is that you're using a Terra to make a bad Pokemon good, when your opponent will probably use their Terra to make a good Pokemon even better. Not to mention, with how low its damage output is, Giga Drain won't be gaining you much recovery. 
Sure, you could run curse and body press, but its issues don't change. You're just running a different flavor of bad. And what about Dragon Dance? What about Dragon Dance? Base 68 attack and 51 speed will not support this attempt at a sweep. I stand corrected. Doug Trio isn't going on this list, because if it had Arena Trap, it would shoot up at least two tiers, just because trapping and removing a problem is just that good. So instead, I'm going to be talking about Sandaconda, but again. And by that, I mean I'm going to tell you to go watch my video on Forgotten Pokemon from every gen, which I should probably plug in at the end of this video. So, to keep it short and simple, Sand Spit is a worse Sand Stream. Its other abilities are bad, and its stats are eerily similar to Hippowdon, but without the utility kit that Hippowdon has to make use of. Or, I don't know, Sand Stream? Of course Iron Bundle is bad. Ice and Flying is a notorious terrible type. These abilities are all worthless, these stats are horrendous, and its move pull is nothing of note. Oh wait a second. That's Delibird. I sure hope I didn't make this joke before in a different video. Hop! Which one? There are probably a few of them, with the only ones coming to mind being Wigglytuff and Persian. Expansive move pulls, yet such low stats that they aren't worth using. Wigglytuff has high HP and nothing else, and because its other defenses are so low, it doesn't take hits on either side of the attacking spectrum. Persian has a solidish move pull and good speed, but it doesn't do any damage and dies in one or two hits. I know I'm supposed to only talk about one per, but these both deserve the spot. To the surprise of perhaps nobody, Swalot is pretty bad. Don't get me wrong now. It has some solid defenses, good HP, and only has two weaknesses. The issues with those weaknesses happens to be that ground is an excellent offensive type. But hey, that's fine. As long as Swalot has a consistent and reliable recovery, I'm sure it can at least make a great toxic stall tank, right? Leftovers, protect, toxic, and your choice of rest, swallow, or pain split. Pain Split is probably the best one, but it isn't consistent. Swallow requires stockpile buffs, and we all know why Rest is flawed. Maybe there'd be a niche here if it just had Recover. Acid Armor and Body Press do make an excellent combo, and Toxic Spikes are a good hazard, but there are better Toxic Spikers, and the lack of good Recovery means that there are better Body Pressers. I think if it had Recover, it could be excellent. Okay. So like, Hypno, right? Is there much debate here? Grumpig at least gets thick fat for additional resists, Gothitelle would probably bump up some tiers if Shadow Tag was unbanned, and Oranguru is more of a doubles Pokemon with Instruct. Hypno is the typical early gen Pokemon that didn't age well, because it doesn't really do anything. Insomnia is good versus Spore users, but I don't know. Breloom can threaten to kill it outright with Technician Bullet Seed, Brute Bonnet threatens a Dark-type move, Toad Scroll ignores abilities with Mycelium Might, and Amoongus will just switch out. Oh, it's also slow, physically frail, and lacks any ounce of offensive power. Skip this one unless you're aiming for Pokedex completion. We now move on to the Steel-type. So, like, I know that I believe Persicker is underrated, just like Houndoom, but Persicker is on this list for an entirely different reason. As I've once covered, this guy is a doubles Pokemon with Steely Spirit, and because it isn't legal in doubles and is only legal in singles, that means I'm only truly allowed to talk about it in singles. Sadly, there are many, many better Steel types, and many better Pokemon with its type of stat spread. Tough Claws is nice, but it doesn't compare to stronger Trick Room Sweepers. And without Trick Room, it's slow to get much going. One day, it'll have a meta where it can be viable, and I'll be there for every second of it. But hey, Taunt and Swords Dance does give it mean wall-breaking potential. Play Rough, Close Combat, and Crunch are solid coverage options. So you know what? Go out there and use Iron Head on every Garganical you can find. Man, I sure hope that the worst water type isn't something I made a video about. Aw, oh, Okay, fine. Mediocre stats, coverage options, abilities, they were better swift swimmers. I really wanted to end this video on something more exciting. 
Can I talk about the electric types instead? Of course I can. It is my video after all. So here's a cute shot of Didene. Now you know what? I want you to sit there and stare at that for a few seconds for some good positive vibes. And that's it. That's the worst of every type. At least for right now. I don't think Pokemon Home is going to change that, since that's mostly introducing good stuff. The same applies to the DLC, because Gen 9 Pokemon for the most part have been pretty cracked. I expect them to make Chi and Pao, Great Tusk, and Goldango tier stuff just knowing how insane this generation has been. What do you want to hear talked about next? More lists? My opinions on Pokemon Home introductions? An entire Dedenne appreciation video? Let me know in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my content. With Scarlet and Violet DLC on the way, we have a lot to be excited for. Not just that though, but I've got a bunch of other cool series planned throughout the year that I'm sure you guys will love. If you want to support my other forms of content, over on Mystic Reads, I read fanfics. One of them right now is Road to be a Pokemon Master Kanto Edition, where Ash and Serena start from the very beginning and journey through Kanto together. On Mystic Umbreon Shorts, I do other exclusive Pokemon content such as Pokemon Facts, and on Saturdays, I upload my top 5 favorite Pokemon of a type. Anyway, Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an excellent day.